That goddamn vape. I had that vape for four days and I broke it. It has a cap that you're supposed to be able to screw off, but for whatever reason, the screw off cap was super tight and uh, I couldn't get it off. And in my attempt to get it off, I broke the glass that contains the fluid. And none of the vape stores in town had replacement glass, so I had to order it online for the specific model of vape that I have. So now I'm smoking again until my glass comes in for the vape, which of course the only place that sold it was like only standard shipping at a like, you know, four weeks, like three to four weeks rate. You know, it's like it's not coming till December. So yeah, bought a vape, broke it immediately, <laughs> even though it was, it, I was, I was loving it. I was totally in love with this vape. And I managed to break it so quickly. Just trying to get this fucking cap off. Uh, anyways. So. This past week. I've been doing practically nothing but reading comics. I've been talking about comics at the end of each of these. Uh, decompression chambers. Briefly. Um, and of course. This was all inspired by Jesse having his panel cast. Which. I don't know if episode 3 of that will be out by the time this comes out, but I did a little guest spot on it um, towards the very end <coughs> where we talked about the new issue of Gwenpool since that's sort of what started this whole thing. And uh, rather than talk about the specific comics I've been reading, I want to talk about like why this is happening. Why am I so into comics right now? And you know, I, I've always had an interest in in different mediums besides anime obviously I you know take a lot of interest in film TV shows comic books um, music which I am you know pretty diehard into I'd say I know quite a lot about music um, just every every form of art essentially I have some interest in especially the, the mediums that really get discussed and the stuff that you know people People analyze and talk about and cherish and collect, all that kind of stuff. And with comics, I talked about sort of how I got an in with comics in the last podcast. Like how I sort of figured out what they're like and that made it easier to start reading them. But as for why I'm so intensely into it right now, it's that as an anime fan... I've, I've kind of talked about in the last podcast how I feel like I'm reaching the end of anime. Like that I've... I've watched so much of the good stuff, and there's only so much of it left. There's only so much left that I need to consume before I can kind of move on um, from anime. I mean, I'll still be watching it forever, and there'll always be new stuff coming out. But, for instance, this year, 2016, in fact, let's just t take the first half of this year, because I have completed everything I intended to from the first half of this year. I watched all the winter and all of the summer shows, um, with a couple of exceptions, uh, in the process of my finish or fail series. And not one thing that I watched did I score a 9 out of 10 or above. Not one single thing that came out in the first half of this year was, was that amazing that I would give it a 9 or above. And I don't, I mean, it's not so much that this is a complaint about this being a weak year, which, you know, I haven't even watched any of the summer or fall shows, so, um, I, I, I might have said summer earlier, I meant winter and spring are the ones I've completed. Um, I'm sure there's probably something that's better than what I've watched so far, and if not, you know, it's not terrible to have a year where nothing is outright amazing, but I feel like... I've gotten to the point where it is a struggle for me to find an anime I haven't seen that's a 9 out of 10 or above. Like, you know, if you get into a medium and you watch all the classics, then what's left? You know, all that's left after the classics is the stuff that's just kinda good. And for me, so much of like what, so many of the anime that I finish now, so often when I go out and do a marathon, when I do finish or fail and just, you know, watch a whole bunch of shows in one big clump, or when I do 
Board of Second Chances or something, or any any of the this, this stuff I do to marathon shows. Like, I'm really getting this baseline 7 out of 10 experience. That's most of what I'm going to see. Most of the shows I haven't watched already are going to be the 7 out of 10 shows. Because if it's something really amazing, then chances are I found out about it already, you know? And the reason I have to scour everything is just on that on that chance, on the chance that I stumble upon something that, you know, no one else thought was a 10 and I did. Because, like, you know, if I only watched Consensus Masterpieces, I probably would never have seen, like, Log Horizon, you know, a show that, that I think is extremely underrated, that for me is one of my favorite shows of all time and has so much going for it that I never saw talked about and I still haven't really seen talked about to a great extent, you know. Um, I think there's there's so many shows like that that I'd be at risk of missing if I didn't try to seek out every good show. But at the same time, like, you know, it takes a lot of effort now. It takes going through all this searching. Um, and in the meantime, I end up watching so many 7 out of 10s. And what's great about being able to dive into comics is that I've got, you know, I know, I have a list, sort of, not like a, a real list, but I, in my mind, from having consumed so many charts and favorites lists and heard so many recommendations, I know a concrete list of like what are considered the classic comics, and I haven't read any of them. So almost everything I read is going to be great. It's either going to be the best comic ever or at least something really cool and interesting. And even if it's not, I'm so new to it that even the like 7 out of 10 stuff is like something that I have never seen before. Where like with anime, I've seen everything. You know, if, if there's some new cute girls doing cute things show that's not bad but it's not noteworthy or like memorable, you know, then... It's not gonna it's not gonna be anything extra for me. I've seen them all. I know exactly what I'm getting myself into. But like with a comic, if I read something that's like it doesn't blow my mind, but it's just interesting enough and I haven't really seen anything like it before, then it's still interesting. So that's sort of what I've been experiencing this past week. It's just every single comic I've read has automatically been like a new fresh experience that adds to my overall understanding and appreciation of the medium. And, uh, that's kind of magical. And I've always wanted that to happen, and I kind of wanted that to happen when I tried to get into comics back in 2012, which I, I read a whole bunch back then, but I never had this sense of, like, finding something complete to read. Like, I didn't understand how comics worked, you know? I thought that it was all just giant series that go on forever, and, you know, there was very few that I read that I really got interested in, and none of them were over yet at the time, or I didn't read the whole thing, so it was just kind of this confusing, like, you know, haze of reading comics. Now I've already put down a few, like, full series that I'm like, that was great. You know, I read The Vision Run. That was great. Um, Silver Server Requiem wasn't amazing, but the artwork was so fucking good, and it was a complete story in, like, four chapters, and I was like, cool, I have, I now know a thing. I know an event in the timeline of the Silver Surfer. I know this thing that happened. Um, and I've been reading Sandman, which is fucking amazing. I'm about a little less than halfway through the whole series, and it's just been all kinds of cool-ass shit happening. And, uh... Yeah, it's it's been it's been great and it's something I can't get from anime right now and Not to say that there's not plenty of good anime. I haven't seen I mean my on hold list stretches towards infinity and a lot of that is legitimately great stuff um, There's plenty of like classics that I still haven't watched um, Especially older ones and I'd love to get to them at some point, but like It's so easy with comics right now to just in one day read like Five comics that are all solid. Today I read, I read, I woke up, I read like a whole arc of the Sandman, which was awesome, and then I read the first two volumes of the New 52 Wonder Woman because I I had bought, I read volume one back in 2012 and I thought it was cool, and so I bought volume two and I never read it, and so today I read both volumes one and two and they were pretty good. And then I also read all of this series called Ares the God of War just because I saw it on a recommendation chart. That one wasn't very good. Um, it was only five chapters. It was a pretty generic, like, re like basically taken except 
with Ares uh, and gods fighting, as opposed to Liam Neeson. But it it was kind of corny, and I wasn't that into it. But then, you know, I followed that up with started reading Animal Man, and I'm like ten chapters into Animal Man. That's pretty cool. So yeah, like all at once, you can just bowl through a bunch of comics and have a great time with it. Um, whereas with anime, you know, there's like a there's a serious time investment if you want to watch even a short show. You know, like a 13 episode show is four hours and it's a lot more taxing because you have to pay full attention. You know, it takes up all of your senses. Whereas with a comic, I can listen to my own music and, and uh, you know, and take a break whenever I want kind of thing. A chapter is just a few, maybe 10 minutes as opposed to 22, you know? So, yeah, it's, it's just very easy to sit around and read comics forever. So I definitely have taken a huge interest in that medium. And it's, it's even making me think about, like, man... I want to get into all the mediums this way. I want it to be like this for all of them. I just want that easy in. I want that moment of realization, like, to happen for literature or for film, where, uh, I don't know what it is about movies, because obviously I've, I've seen, like, fucking 750 movies, uh, in my lifetime, according to my Letterboxd account, which is pretty complete. So it's not like I haven't seen a ton of movies. It's just weird to try to, like, get into them in a big way. I guess just because movies are almost always short. And I'm not that into, like, that super short form uh, media. You know, even though I'm saying that comics are short. But, like, comics tend to have a lot of shit happen in, the sh in those short spans of time. They're just really fast and constant, like, crazy fucking things are going on. Um, in comparison to the way movies are more of a, like... A slow build to making one point, whereas a comic will just make a thousand points by the time it's over. Uh, at least the ones I've been reading have been kind of like that. Um, but, you know, maybe one day I'll find the time to get into that as well. I definitely think that I'm just more, more interested in drawings in general than I am in, you know, live action. I just, I have much more of a predilection towards things that that couldn't exist in reality than I do to things that could exist in reality, you know? Um, I'm much more interested in the fantastical and the and the, uh, the mythological, just to an extent. Like, with the Sandman, like, the Sandman could not be anything other than a comic. Like, it, it I, I don't even think it could be an animated series, really. I think it's, like, perfect as it is, and I could not see it being adapted into anything else. Uh, which is probably why it hasn't been, really. And, um, it's, yeah, it's just so imaginative and so out there. I guess it could be a book. The only thing I could imagine it as would be a, a novel. So even less information would, would be, uh, would be helpful for it. But then you'd lose out on the awesome character designs. So, yeah, um, and the reason I haven't started talking about comics is... What allows me the time to do this is that, you know, November is a month that I already... I did all my work for November before the month started. Gave it all to Davu. He's been editing. Um, you know, we've been working on a couple little things here and there. He wants me to do more, like, vlogs and stuff. But honestly, I just haven't had any ideas for things to put him in. Uh, so, in the meantime... I've, you know, I've got, like, a, a video or two planned for next month. But, like... I have a lot of time to read comics, and you might be thinking, why not make videos about comics? If you're so into it, why not do some reviews? Why not talk about it? And it, it's just a matter of the way that I like to do my content, which is to come at it from a very broad perspective. I like, for, for me, every anime video I make is from the perspective of someone who has seen all the anime. You know, like, it's it's kind of imperative to the way I write, where I talk about a series for what makes it unique, as opposed to what it is. Like, something like Mob Psycho 100 that I did recently, where, like, I really just zeroed in on this one aspect of it that was not something that has, is in any other anime I can think of, you know, in, in the exact way that it is in that show. And so... To me, that's the most interesting way to write about something. And when I think of a comic book, like if I wrote about what's interesting to me about some of these comics I've read, 
then I really run the risk of comic book fans being like, yeah, no shit. You know, I mean, and I know some people are, are happy just to hear someone talking about something they like, no matter how basic. But for me personally, the style I like to go for has that broad perspective. So maybe eventually I will write about comics, but I feel like it's not something I could do until I've read, you know, enough that I could, that I wouldn't be easily torn down by comic book fans if I said something wrong. You know, I want to have a good enough grasp of the overall canon and the way that comics have moved over the years, like what they've been up to. Like, uh, I'm slowly getting this sense that uh, in the 80s and early 90s, they started, like, using lots of, uh, old superheroes as cannon fodder. Like, it seems like there's a lot of, like, individual chapters of stuff like Animal Man and the Sandman, where it'll be like, introduce some old DC character so we can kill them. <laughs> like, just to have a really dark scene in a chapter. Um, which fits in with that, you know, this is the era when the Watchmen and, and Vertigo took off, and, like, you know, it's a it's a deconstructive era of comics when comics got serious and adult and stuff. So yeah, it'd be interesting to you know study up on stuff like that. But uh, yeah, um, that's all I have to say about that for now. I have this great fear with regards to what I do because I've seen so many other people fall into this this sort of trap, and I'm afraid it'll happen to me. See, I hear all the time people giving the advice that uh, you shouldn't make your art your job because then you'll grow to hate doing it. I think it's weird that people give that advice because obviously most of the artists you know and are a fan of have made art their job. Um, you know, anyone who's ever made a movie or written a comic with any degree of mainstream success, anyone who's made an anime, they're, they're making their job, their art. Um, and for many of us, that's the only way we can justify doing our art. I mean, it's nice when you get to do art as a pastime, but like, for some of us, doing a normal job is soul crushing and we feel like that's keeping us from doing our art that we should be doing. No, I've never had a problem with that. The idea of making my art my job is totally cool with me, and if anything, it makes the art even more satisfying. When I get to make something and then it makes money, that's like the pinnacle of, uh, of making the art for me. My fear is a different one. What I've observed is when you make your art your life, then your art runs the risk of becoming boring. And here's what I mean. I'm talking kind of about this modern phenomenon of like daily vloggers, people who do stuff daily, who do stuff all the time, who are constantly making things about themselves. Because what inevitably happens is that who you are becomes a guy who makes things about himself. And that narrative ult is, is, is always going to just kind of eat its own tail, you know? You, you see where I'm going with this, like, for instance. I love Casey Neistat, I love his vlogs, um, but I got into him, you know, and started watching the daily vlogs, and I watched like over a hundred of them, and inevitably, they all start bleeding into each other. I mean, if you watch one now, nothing's gonna be in it you haven't seen before. Very rarely will he do something really innovative in one of his vlogs. And so, it kind of becomes where the story of Casey Neistat is the story of a guy who makes a daily vlog, you know? Not that that's really what he's doing. I mean, his vlog takes up, you know, only so much of his day. He always says, you know, what you're seeing is 10 minutes of a 24-hour day in which I'm busy for those whole 24 hours. And sure, he works on other things, he keeps himself busy, but when you're watching just the daily vlog, it's like inevitably, it's just gonna be what like what it is it's it's repetitive every you're always either watching him flying somewhere or watching him skateboarding around new york or flying drones around new york you know or hanging out with one of the same couple of people or doing some kind of speech somewhere like you're gonna see those same things over and over and over and over again and he's not even the worst example 
and this is kind of why I don't follow Game Grumps anymore. And I, I Game Grumps has this this channel called Grump Out, which is like for a bunch of side things that they do that are, are not relevant to the main channel. Even though I unfollowed Game Grumps like towards the beginning of this year, I still follow Grump Out, so I still kind of see little bits and pieces of them. And they just started up this interview series that's very similar to the PCP interviews, except ours are three hours long and there's only 45 minutes. But it's one of the Grumps will interview one of the other Grumps uh, for 45 minutes about what their life was up until joining the game Grumps. And funnily enough, the least interesting interview that I've heard so far is the one where Aaron interviews Dan. Now, Dan is my favorite member of the Game Grumps. He's a super cool guy, he's super nice and lovable, and listening to him talk is relaxing and fun, and it's what's made Game Grumps such a great show since, he's, since he came on. But what killed Game Grumps for me, ultimately, is that Dan only has so many stories. Dan doesn't have a great memory. He's not generally someone who, A, has a whole ton of memories, and B, uh, will remember whether or not he's told the same stories before. So listening to his interview was just kind of a reminder of all the problems I have with Game Grumps now, which is that they just talk about the same shit. Because, you know, their lives up until Game Grumps, once those stories are exhausted, there's nothing left to go on. But their story now is, they make Game Grumps. You know, when they talk about what they've been up to, it's always the same thing. It's, well, you know what we've been up to. We make Game Grumps, you know? Like, of course, it's gonna be the same stuff. And again, it's not that they record every single thing that they're up to in the day, but the exciting things happening in their lives are all relative to the show you're already watching. And I have long been worried about falling into this exact trap, of falling into the trap of... You know, and you, you hear this on the DigiBros show, where me and Victor would get together, and I usually let Victor tell all the stories, because Victor is doing film, and like, he's not a YouTuber, he's not, his daily life is not explained anywhere, so when he comes on the show, he's telling all these stories about all these things that I don't know about, it'll be some film he was working on, and, and the film has nothing to do with the process of having made the film, whereas like, this podcast that you're listening to right now, there is no, like, story to it beyond the fact that it is about my life. You know, the, the process of its creation is the same thing as what it is. Um, so if you were to watch one of Victor's films that he's worked on, you won't learn about what he was doing on the film. That is a story best explained on DigiBros. But me, I don't have a lot of that. And you'd hear this all the time where I'd be like, well, I was working on this video that came out on my main channel, you know? There's nothing more to it. It's like the story of me making Shinbo in the 90s is that I watched all the Shinbo shows and I wrote a video and Davu edited it. There's nothing more complex to it. So I'm always worried that I am going to inevitably become a boring person because I, like my pool of things to talk about is pretty much self-explanatory. And that's why sometimes, that's that's why I constantly try to innovate with things. Like with the Digibro After Dark, I did like a huge amount of vlogs and then I've kind of calmed down with them a bit. And now I've started this podcast and like this podcast might seem like it's pretty much the same thing as After Dark, but it's different in enough ways that it keeps things fresh. That it's not the exact same thing as Digi Bros, where, you know, uh, as I explained in episode one of this, on Digi Bros, it's more of a conversation. It's more of like me presenting myself to another person. On uh, After Dark, it's more idea focused. Each video is about a certain idea. This podcast is just freeform thought dumping about what's going on with me right now, you know? So it's somewhat different. It's a different approach, and there's different nuances and different little flavors you can get out of it that you might not get out of the other things I'm doing. And I feel like it's imperative to keep to keep innovating that way because when you watch enough Game Grumps, eventually it's it's just the same thing every episode. Dan tells the same stories, Aaron cracks the same jokes. We already know their lives. We already know the Game Grumps experience, and it just it kind of all at once just got so dull right around when uh I would say 
right at the end of last year, like when they were wrapping up Dead Rising and when uh, when when uh, Mario Maker just went on a little bit too long. And now I have seen, and I haven't watched these videos yet, but I've seen that Grumps have been doing a few new things. Like they just did a playthrough of just Aaron playing Mega Man X, and I, I totally want to watch that because that's new. You know, whoa, it's just one of them. What will that be like? What will the dynamic be? You know, and that kind of little innovation is enough to, to perk my interest again. And Casey Neistat has talked about how, you know, he's going to stop the daily vlog at some point, And I'm kind of excited for that. I want him to go back to just, you know, I, I want to see just his films, his, his little short films that he likes making. I want to know what it's going to be like to go back to those or to see what kind of innovations he'll think of if he has more time and isn't, you know, instead of putting those you, 10 minutes a day or whatever, you know, which is obviously he works on for hours on the editing of the videos. So it's not like it's literally just 10 minutes a day going into the vlogs. But I want to know what it'll be like when he decides to open it up and do something a little bit more experimental as opposed to the same things he's been doing. And yeah, that's why I have to keep innovating. And like this podcast is only going to go as long as I think it's interesting. As long as I keep thinking that I have these unstructured ideas. And it works really well for right now because of the fact that I haven't been having these single topic ideas like I was when I was doing the really intense vlogs and I was vlogging like every day uh, as I was for you know most of the summer of this year because at that time it was just man I've had so many random topical thoughts that I need to get out there and right now I haven't been having those I've been more having a uh, my, like my life has been this kind of hazy miasma of moving between things of this weird experience of being way ahead of myself in work and way ahead of myself in planning you know I have things planned for a fairly large amount of time ahead of me which is unusual I've got uh, you know all these new interests like comics that I don't really want to talk about in videos that I'm like exploring so there's just this whole world of new things happening that I'm not used to and this is the right this podcast is the right vehicle for exploring that but as soon as it stops being that way this podcast will probably end I'm really predicting this to have maybe, maybe it'll go for a season, you know, like an anime season. I kind of started it at, uh, when did I start this? Midway through October? No, late into October. So I could see it going till maybe the end of the year, uh, maybe until Radcon 2. That would probably be uh, a stopping point, which when that happens, you know, me and Jesse are going to make the plebe and the weeb. That's going to be 10 whole videos on its own, so that's a whole different experimental thing. We're going to be working more on trying to move Jesse and Nate down here, so that's going to be a whole thing. So, yeah, like, there's just going to be... There's going to be a lot of changes going forward, and for each stage, I want... I want everything to evolve. I don't ever want to be boring. I don't ever want people to watch my videos and be like, this is the exact same thing I heard last time. And I, I know that I repeat myself a lot. I know I come from a very certain place and that I'm not always presenting new ideas, but I do think that the rate at which I present new ideas is kind of staggering. I don't know anybody else who's who, who puts out as much content as I do and for as many of the ideas to be unique. And as I watch other people, I've come to realize that, like, a lot of people are more just kind of known for holding one position. You know, they're not really, especially, like, politicians. I remember having this interesting moment where I was kind of, like, watching a few different things that Bernie Sanders had, had been saying back when he was trying to run, uh, you know, for president. And it was weird to realize that they all say the exact same thing. He has a, a strict platform, and everywhere he goes, he just presents his platform. And, you know, a lot of comedians in the old days before, uh, you know, before now everybody kind of has to change their set if they want to keep making specials for the internet age. But, like, stand-up comedy is usually you go to a bunch of places, you tell the same jokes. And there are certain YouTubers who are kind of like that. Where if you watch Jimquisition or something, it's not so much about him constantly coming up with new ideas as it is him applying the ideas he always applies to a variety of uh, different subjects. And, uh, and I think that's what standard reviews are like. I think most reviewers are like saying, hey, uh, you all know what my opinions in general are. Uh, here's how this show worked with my general stance. Um, 
And I've never really done that. I've always been more of like every video, everything I do has to have something new. It has to say something I haven't said before because I often take this stance that like, if you know how I feel about things, then you can apply it to everything else. Like you can take what I've said about this show and you can then apply it to every other show you've seen. Um, but I actually think maybe I've been somewhat misguided in that. Like when I think of reviews as entertainment or even as just giving people information, I think it could be helpful if I took on like every show in kind of the same way because nobody else is watching all of it. You know, nobody else has the time to sort through every single show and tell you how they all relate. And speaking personally as someone who's been watching video game analysis for four fucking years now while playing very few video games, like, I am deeply invested in the narrative of video game evolution even though I'm not following it at all. You know, I'm just following these analysts who are, like, sort of guiding me through what games are doing, but I don't even play the games <laughs> for the most part. So I feel like... There's probably people who, and, and this would be a great way, if I ever just want to like buckle down and get out a lot of videos and expand my audience, I would probably do something a bit more like that. Just like make more reviews of things and just like go through a ton of anime and just express opinions on them and sort of get people invested in the narrative. It's just that with, with anime in particular, there's so much foundation I felt like I had to build. Like, that no one was talking about the things I wanted them to talk about with anime. And there's so many ideas I have to present and so many, so much groundwork I have to lay before I can even consider just, like, jumping on to each individual show, you know? And over time, as I've kept doing this, I've seen some of the ideas I've presented start to permeate through, you know, other people in the way they talk about shows. So, that's been cool to see. But I want to take it even further. Anyway, hopefully that helps you to understand why why I never have anything happen consistently. And I know that can be kind of weird for my followers who might get really into one way that I've been doing things and then have it kind of disappear. Um, you know, Digibros will be back. I know it seems dead right now because we haven't been doing anything for it, but I, I still like that format and I like the idea of it coming out consistently over time. But things like... You know, when I start up some new video series and it seems like, oh, his content's going to go in this direction. And then it just like hard right veers somewhere else or anything like that. You know, it's understandably, I could see how that could throw people for a loop and, and make it so it's harder to follow me in a way. But uh, it's just how I like doing things. I want to always be new. I want to always be fresh. I don't ever want you to like wake up one morning and put on one of my videos and feel like, God, it's just Digi saying the same old shit, you know? I don't ever want you to feel like you can just skip half my videos, which is how I feel about, like, nice that or Game Grumps, that I don't have to watch them. Like, a new video comes out, and I'm just like, eh, I know what I'm gonna get myself into, you know? I can watch it at a later date. I want, when one of mine comes out, you're like, what is it gonna be this time? What's he gonna tell me? What new thing am I gonna learn, you know? I hope it's felt that way. Anyway... Uh, continued in the next part. So, in the process of reading all these comics and books and all that other stuff I've been reading, there's one dangerous thought that keeps popping back into my mind. It's, it's sort of an itch that I get every once in a while. And I know this is relatable for some other people who do the kind of work I do, which is that itch to make original stories. Even though I don't really like writing original stories or constructing them in any way but there's there's all these characters and plots that I came up with ages ago that like when it bubbles up to the surface it's like god maybe I should finally make that story maybe it's time to bring these characters to life even though most of the stories and characters that I have are just byproducts of things I was interested in long ago that like I the current me has no, like, relationship with the the spark that generated these characters and ideas, you know? Like, I feel like me now couldn't possibly bring them to life in the way that me then wanted them to be brought to life. But I, I was thinking about why this keeps happening. Why do I keep getting this inspiration, specifically from reading comics? And, uh, 
and books to a lesser extent, but comics especially, and it's because it's my language. Like, obviously I watch anime in, you know, with subtitles and stuff. I read manga that's translated and everything. But Japanese has a very specific way of communicating. Like, the way their language is, the way, they're, the way that their writing sounds. Like, I'm very used to hearing it. I know exactly what it's like, and I could not recreate it. Like, there's no way I could write an anime-style story using English words. Because to me, those wor those stories are communicated through Japanese. Like, the way the language is, is integral to the way that characters communicate in anime and manga. And if I knew Japanese well enough, I'd almost be tempted to write, you know, an anime-style story. Because, like, just the way I think about them is so integrally tied to that. But now when I read, like, books and comics, it's like, whoa! These are my words! These are sentences I would come up with. These, these are stories that, that seem like something I would have invented, you know? And it's been especially true with these comics that's, that, uh... God, comics have such a willingness to go so big and so audacious and so, like, out there with their ideas and to do it quickly, like, with no hesitation, just to bowl through all these high concepts. Um, you know, and obviously this isn't true of all comics, but, you know, there's the crazy ones like The Sandman and I've been reading uh, Grant Morrison's Animal Man, which are just like nothing but mind-destroying high-concept shit all the time. But even like, the like, even normal stuff, like, I mean, in comics, comparing characters to gods is like a mainstay feature of comics. Like. In an average comic, someone will be a god. Uh, there will be a battle between gods. The universe will be at stake. Alternate dimensions and realities are a constant, you know? It's kind of like... It's funny for me because, like, when I watched Rick and Morty, I thought, wow, this show goes so far beyond the, the insane with, like, you know, uh, with going to all these different dimensions and universes and stuff, and it's so flippant about it. And that's kind of what I love about Rick and Morty, is that it's so flippant and it's all just kind of a big joke to that story. But in comics, they also do kind of do that. Like, it's not as flippant about it, but it's so sudden. Like, where, where aliens from another dimension will show up and be like, Oh, we created your reality, you know? And that just happens in a comic book. It's kind of taken as a given that, that crazy ass shit will happen. And, uh, I feel like that like when I'm reading these these things it feels like the kinds of stories that I used to come up with back when I was trying to be a writer you know most of the stories that I had thought up involved some kind of super superhuman superpowers like uh, g concepts as characters I mean for fuck's sake in uh, the Sandman in that comic series there's these seven things called the endless which are personifications of concepts uh, they are dream death destiny uh, destruction, I think, D uh, psh, desire, mm, delirium, and eh, I'm forgetting one, but, you know, it's seven personifications of concepts, and, like, in my story that I was writing called, uh, uh, Tales from the End of the World, then it was, like, I had seven concepts personified, it was, like, these seven gods who ruled over this city, um, who were all like personifications of concepts. There was the chaos, the end, the uh, something else. I don't remember them right now. <laughs> it's been a long time. The chaos was the one that that like mattered to the story. But um, you know that's that's the kind of stuff I used to do. And there's just so many little things when I'm reading the Sandman where I'm like, fuck, I would have written this, and I, I never even read this story. Like I wasn't influenced by this. Funnily enough, I was more influenced by anime and stuff like that, but somehow I still got these concepts that are so comic book, and it's like, reading these comics, I wonder if I would have felt more at home in in this, like if I would grown up with these, you know, if I would grown up with comics like The Sandman, which is, ironically, The Sandman has been around me my whole life, because my mom is a hardcore collector of The Sandman. She owns all the comics, she has tons of statues, she's been like a lifelong fan, and I've never actually read any of it. So like, 
you know, it's it's this weird irony to pick it up now and be like, this is exactly the kind of thing that I've always been looking for, you know? And, uh, and it just makes me wonder if I would have become more incensed to write if I had, you know, seen these things before to, to create my own stories. And even though I still like a lot of the concepts I had before, it's just... A lot of them are just not me. Like, I don't have that same kind of, like... I don't know. It used to be that I loved edgy shit. I loved to write this crazy, off-the-wall, edgy shit, you know? And now, the idea of writing something more abstracted than reality, just, like, I can't even do it. I, I try... I, uh, because of NaNoWriMo, which is, you know, every November is NaNoWriMo, and I, I had done, I was working on this video project, I kind of canceled that, and then I thought, like, four or five days into November, I was like, what if I just try to write an actual novel? Let's just go for it. And I wrote, like, four pages of something, and most of what I wrote was more, like, diary style. It was like, I was just writing everything that came into my head as it came into my head and uh and i just wrote out like four pages of stuff that kind of works as maybe an intro to a story and then i like at the end of those four pages i was like all right now let's launch into an actual story like a fiction story and i just couldn't do it it's like that that just isn't my style to make stuff something up as opposed to just saying things that are on my mind and I'm, I think I'm good at that. I think I'm good at writing nonfiction. And maybe I could write a whole book worth of just thoughts that come into my head. You know, I don't think a book is really the best outlet for it. I think these kinds of podcasts and vlogs are great. And even if I did something written, I'd prefer it to be more like a series of journal entries or something. Just, I don't, I don't like writing non-real things. And, and as time has gone on, I've gotten worse and worse at it. So, it's weird, because I feel like I should. I feel like, when, when I read these comics, I feel like I should do this. But then, I'm like, who even wants it? Who wants me to do that? Like, it, it might not even, it probably won't be good for me, and not good for anyone else, compared to what I'm already doing, you know? But it's this odd compulsion. And I know this is something that other people get. I know, because Davu uh, had, had, like, a like a month ago he went into what he called like a game hole where he just suddenly remembered like the, like a trigger in his mind that like because for so long he wanted to design games and he has designed games he has made actual games before um you know very minor little uh self-made ones that took him forever but like there's a huge part of his brain that still thinks of him as a games guy like his destiny is supposed to be to make games and like even though he's happy with what he's doing now and he loves being an editor and he loves you know working on analysis videos there's still this this little thing in his mind that gets switched every once in a while and he becomes obsessed with making a video game but then he remembers that he that, that it's not the time yet and he dials it back he grabs the dial and he dials it back oh god i'm i'm like I've got my hand on my head and I'm grabbing like a dial on the side of my head like Stein from uh, Frankenstein in uh, Soul Eater. Imagine that. Cranking that dial. But, but for me, it's even more torturous because I feel like I'm at a place in my career where I, I totally have time. Like if I wanted to start writing now, I have time now. You know, I... My dream when I started up Patreon and everything, even when I first started making videos, like I've always wanted it to be where I could get so far ahead of myself that I'd have time to work on other things. And I've said this a thousand times, I must have. Like, that me giving all this work to Davu ahead of time is meant to free me up to do whatever I want. And I have been doing other things than my main videos, but like, you know, it's all been kind of related. It's all more things that utilize those same kinds of talents. The the speaking, the vlogging, the video editing, the making making content for YouTube, you know. Occasionally writing a little bit of, you know, non-fiction stuff here and there. But that that itch for prose writing, it just creeps up and it grabs me and it makes me feel like Ugh, you have time you can do it but then it's like what do I actually want to write I just I'm just so in love with the idea that I could do it 
that I could be a writer, that I could be creating these kinds of stories, but do I actually want to? Do I actually want to sit down and try to write prose, which I hate? The answer is probably no, but it's torturous because so much of my life was about that up until you know, I found this. Like, arguably, even though even though it's something no one's seen, even though no one knows or cares about that aspect, you know, I was 10 when I wrote my first story, and I was about 20 when I gave up on writing stories. I mean, I was 20 when I... No, I guess I was 20 when I actually wrote the book, the NaNoWriMo book, the one that I succeeded at. So, so you know, 10 years, I was writing stories, and then... In the, in the next couple of years, I mean, the last thing I wrote was Cyrano and Purple Steve in 2011. So, you know, it's 11 years of stories. Nobody read any of them. None of them are worthy of digging back up, really. But that's a huge part of my identity, and it's still there, needling at me in the back of my mind. And uh, who knows? Maybe one day I'll give in to it. In the meantime, I think I might just release those four pages of that book that I, you know, just, just those four pages, just to see how people feel about my style of writing. Because I don't really think that story is worth continuing, but it would be interesting to see how people feel about reading that kind of thing. So that's all. Oh boy, for this last section I'm gonna be sitting in my desk chair as opposed to the couch. I mean, I don't know if anybody like processes how relaxed I am anyways in these, but you know, this one's a, this, this bit's gonna be decompression more in the sense, uh, not so much in the relaxing sense as the god I need to get the thoughts out of my head sense. I feel like shit right now. I've made the, I don't know why I do this to myself mistake of eating fast food twice today. All I've eaten today is fast food and no, not not just any fast food but both Wendy's and Arby's and every time I eat Arby's I feel like total garbage the only reason at all to go to Arby's is that it's right next to my house so like you know I can walk there uh, but god it's it makes me feel terrible I don't know why I ever eat at Arby's it's such a bad idea so I feel like garbage uh, doesn't help that I'm back to cigarettes because of my vape bro breaking and shit and like the I've been getting head rushes because I fucking bought 100s like an idiot oh god I feel like a fucking mishmash whirlwind of shit and the main reason um, aside from all the physical stuff is that I have way too much power and way too much responsibility for me to deal with at this point in my life I I am too big I have too much pull, I have too big of a voice, and my vision outstrips my ability to deal with the things I say. My god, I put out two videos the other day, um, that, I mean, these aren't, these are not big videos, they're on After Dark, they've got, you know, 5,000 views a piece, but it's amazing how much I can just, like, suggest something and cause, you know, after effects to ripple out from it. So one of the videos was uh, to make a recommendations community on Reddit. And it's the kind of thing where, for whatever reason in my head, it's like, all right, I'm posting up three recommendations. Maybe this will have, like, I'll make a video about it, you know, suggesting it to people. They'll post, like, 20 or so recommendations. I'll go through them. It'll be slow forever. Um, no, of course it's not like that. I posted that video and there's fucking several hundred recommendations on the board already. And immediately I'm like, well, I can't moderate this. Like, I don't have time to go through this and moderate this and, you know, like check out absolutely all of it. I mean, I have been actually consuming a lot of it. And uh, immediately it paid off in a huge way because in uh, one of the first recommendations, someone posted this series um, by a, a music guy called Nick Ott, I think that's his name, Chris Ott, I don't know why I thought Nick, Chris Ott, O-T-T, who did this series called Shallow Rewards, which is um, just a series of this guy, like, just basically vlogging in much the same style as Digibro After Dark, where it's just, like, his face, and he's talking about stuff, uh, about music, usually about music history and just interesting stuff, and it's fucking great, because the way he talks is insane, it's... He, he talks like 
he's writing an article in speech. And I, I don't just mean like a straightforward article. He writes, or he talks like prose almost, and just makes all these connections and references to things at a blistering speed where, you know, I don't completely, I don't know a lot of the stuff he's saying, and yet I can draw the connections and I can kind of get it and I can follow it. And it just, everything he talks about is fascinating because he just has this unfucking believable wealth of knowledge about music and its history, you know, and he's a, a former journal or he i mean he is a journalist but he formerly worked for like uh pitchfork and stuff and he has all these opinions about the way the state of the industry and stuff and what what got to me the most about the way he talks is that he's very serious there's there's not a whole lot i mean he swears and stuff and it, it's it's sort of loose and and personal and gonzo but there's no sense of like making fun of himself in the way that like i do where i come out with the fucking sunglasses and the robe and everything and I try to make like a big joke of it so that uh so I don't come off as like a you know a douchebag or whatever this guy doesn't care he's just like he's upfront about how much he cares about the shit he's talking about you know he's very uh dramatic about it but in a good way and I really enjoy it and I'm watching these and what, what got to me the most is how he name drops things. You know, he constantly is, you know, making reference to specific musicians, specific points in time, specific people in the industry and people in his line of work, you know, fellow journalists and stuff like that. And it fascinated me because I've had this problem with how I think there's a lot of great journalism happening in the anime community right now and no communication happening between the people doing it i mean they're 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 some of them are friends with each other on twitter and stuff but there's no like cross-referencing there's no people saying like uh, or like joining of information you know like i'm writing this series on akiyuki shinbo and i'm reading wave motion canon which is blogging about akiyuki shinbo and i'm reading you know this and that person talking about this stuff why aren't we all talking about it together why is there no coalition of information you know if we're all doing the same research why are we not sort of in the same field together you know it, it's odd that we we're all kind of reading each other but not mentioning it to our audience no one's like by the way check out digibro check out wave motion cannon you know we're not doing the back and forth and that's including me i'm not doing enough back and forth um you know so i decided when i was watching these chris ott videos i was like i gotta i gotta fucking get something out there like that so i made a video like that you know a mere hour after i had just put out the video about the recommendations thing on deji bro after dark you know so i just launched this this reddit board that is already spiraling out of my control and then an hour later, I launch another video that's like where I name drop eight different people who by morning have all seen this video and have all commented on it on Twitter. And I'm trying to like fucking, you know, figure out what to do with the can of worms I just opened. And now suddenly I have all this responsibility because I'm the one calling people out. So now I have to do it. I have to follow up. I have to follow through, you know, I have to go and make reference to all these people and try to make these connections and start talking to people. And, you know, I just showed like eight important guys. Hey, I want to start a dialogue between us, you know, and that's, that's where I am now. And that's just, it's so weird because the way I go about creating things, it's all about that video. And this happens to me all the time, where I make a video that has a ripple effect, that has this follow-up, but I've already moved on. Like, when I publish a video, I have mentally moved on to the next thing. You know, sure, I will incorporate elements of what I've said, I I'll start moving in that direction, but like... You know, I feel like the kinds of calls to action that I do on like a weekly basis are the kind of things that most people save for once a year or once every six months, you know, like every so often someone's like, hey, why don't we all do this? And everyone else is like, mm, that's an interesting thought. And I do that like constantly. And then I'm always like, you know, it backfires on me partly because I have no skills of delegation and I don't talk to anybody. You know, my biggest problem is I'm not talking to enough people. I am very... I'm, I'm a hermit, you know, I talk to the PCP, those are my friends. I, like, almost exclusively talk to the members of the Procrastinators podcast. That's it. I really don't talk to anybody else except for, like, you know, a few uh, ancillary people like Mumkey or Munchie who are basically PCP members as it is. And, you know, some of my other friends like Neil X, who I, even him, I can barely ever get around to talking to, you know. It's like, 
it's really the close people who I have a narrative with that I keep talking to. So, you know, when I open these cans of worms, it's like, I don't know what to do with it. Who can I possibly appoint to be the moderator of this recommendation subreddit? I don't know who anybody is. You know, everyone posting there, you know, they're, they're now, you know, possibly committed to being a part of this community, but I have no idea who I could pick out. You know, after like a year, I appointed Lachlan Still, the moderator of the Digibro subreddit, you know, the one that I that I have for myself. Maybe it hasn't been out for a year. I have no idea. Uh, but after a long period of time, you know, I saw that Lachlan was, he reads everything on there and responds to everything. And I was like, well, this guy cares more about my subreddit than I do. I'll make him the fucking mod. And even then, I still do most of the moderation work myself because something gets caught in the fucking filter or something and I, I'm the one who ends up taking it down. Uh, so... Yeah, just because I'm on there all the time, not like to take anything away from Lachlan, like I just kind of get to stuff faster and I understand why he'd rather have me make executive decisions than, uh, you know, try to decide for me what goes on my Reddit board, but that's the problem. I, I don't know how to like delegate tasks to people and like hand power over and, and, and not try to be a part of every single fucking thing that I open up and then as a result so much of what I start goes unfinished. So many of the things that, like, I opened up this huge big idea to the world and everyone's like, what? whoa, that's a cool idea, and then, you know, I lose interest and the whole thing dies because I don't, I don't leave anybody in charge. I don't know who to leave in charge. Um, you know, I, I wish I was better at that. I wish I could have the mindset of someone like, uh, you know, I watch Casey Neistat and he's going around talking to all these different kinds of people and, like, he starts up something like Beam and it's like, he started it, but the guy who, like, fucking co-founded Tumblr is the guy who runs it, you know, and I wish I knew people like that who I could delegate to these things. But the problem is it's all unpaid. Like, these are all passion projects, you know? I can't pay somebody to mod the fucking recommendations uh, board. What is it? Rec rec compendium i can't like pay someone to do it it's just like hey who's interested in like taking this idea that i had out of nowhere and now you're suddenly in charge of it <laughs> you know like i don't I haven't even peppered anybody up and gotten them excited i just launched this fucking thing the second i had the idea for it but that's me i just kind of go and go and go and i don't stop and and then, you know, I, I blast past the things that I've left in my wake. And, uh, it's a sad thing. And it's not that I don't think I have time to, like, even do some of this stuff. It's just that I like moving on. You know, I'm so into getting into the next idea. And when I have a, an idea, it's always a big idea. And I guess it is that I don't have time. Like, it, how am I meant to, you know, launch a community? And, like, for most people, that's then what they're doing. You know, for most people who are like a moderator of a forum, that's like when they get off work, that's what they do with their day. You know, they moderate the forum for a, for a few hours. Like that's, that's their kind of thing they do as a creative outlet. And for me, it's like, I just launched a community and now I'm gonna go watch 200 fucking Shaft shows so I can write about them or something. You know, like I have some huge project I have to go do that will totally absorb everything and I will not have time for this forum. So uh, yeah, that's the kind of nightmare I live in. And then, you know, I know that some of the comments on here are, like, there's probably going to be somebody who's like, hey, uh, what about me? I'd like to delegate your forum. And the, the other problem is that, like, again, I don't know people, and I don't trust anybody I don't know. Like, and I don't go and meet people, so I never meet anybody who I can trust. You know, not that I don't think that you guys can probably do a good job, just that, like, the way I am, I, I don't tend to, like, contact people unless I already know them for something, you know, like, for me, before I ever, like, follow someone or befriend them or, like, get their fucking Discord information, it's always, like, someone who I've been watching for a while, who I know their content, and I'm like, oh, I'm comfortable with this person, and those aren't the people you can hand something over to, because those are the people who are already running their own channel, you know? I already felt, like, kind of bad that I saddled, like, I know Lachlan wants to do it, but I felt funny about saddling him with the, the moderating of Digibro, when it's like, his attention's obviously not gonna be here, he's got his own fucking YouTube channel you know he probably hopes that one day he'll have his own subreddit <laughs> you know uh, dedicated to his work um, that he can fucking find somebody to delegate it to but yeah so that's the place I'm in right now and it's it's kind of dramatic and 
and I just never have like, my ideas just don't fucking stop and especially when I'm watching something like these Chris Ott videos and just like every single one makes me want to go do something I, I started up so many videos yesterday like aside from those two that I already released I, I filmed a fucking hour-long thing that I'm working on uh, that's got like full editing and stuff and it, if it if it's successful it might launch a whole other series you know I, I did in fact post on my reddit the the story I was talking about in the last part of this podcast um, that I had written like five pages of and you know let that out there and people were like yeah this is kind of not bad I could see you reading more of your prose and I'm like don't tell me that tell me it's awful tell me to stop <laughs> don't don't tell me I can do this because that's fucking scary you know and and every time I read some like god I I'm so envious of the people on Twitter who like post screenshots of every show they fucking watch and like make web M's of every cool piece of animation and I feel like that's a real service that I could be doing you know that I could be going through I tried to do this uh like a week ago two weeks ago when I was watching moon phase and like I capped out this little segment that I was like this seems like it's probably one of Shin Onuma's like first defining moments and I like kind of posted it but then I didn't feel anything afterwards I can't I can't even tell when I've made a tweet people like really care about because everything I fucking post gets a thousand likes and retweets I know I'm making that sound like oh woe is me everything gets so many likes but it really does like make it so you don't even really know that you've had an impact unless it's like way over the top, you know, like the number of likes and retweets you get. Um, it's like, I don't even know if it's helping anybody who does, did anybody care that Shino Numa had a thing in some show you probably never fucking watched or cared about because it's 12 years old and who the hell is Shino Numa? I haven't even made a video about him yet to make anybody care about him. Um, you know, but then I see those people and every time I'm like, man, is what I'm doing really helping people you know am i really like helping the anime community could would i be more helpful if i was like i don't know typesetting scanslations or something it, and of course i can't make money doing that so i'm gonna be you know i can't do as much if i'm doing something that doesn't make me any money because i have to get a regular job and i can only do whatever it is on the side you know um which is in its own way kind of sad uh, and obviously i'm not very self-sacrificing about all this um uh, but Jesus, I wish I could fucking, I need to learn Japanese because I could do so much more and I do feel bad. I feel like I, you know, I consider myself a journalist and I say gonzo journalist and that's both a defense and a warning. Like the reason I'm gonzo is because, you know, it lets you know, hey, I cannot necessarily be held to be like presenting accurate facts this is just my interpretations and that's you know some people might see it as well you're just using an excuse to not do more research and I'm like sure fine you can accuse me of that I certainly don't do as much research as I could but it's also to warn you like hey I haven't done my due diligence this is not facts this is just how I'm interpreting the things that I see you know the data that I see so be aware that that's what you're getting yourselves into um and yeah but i do feel bad that i'm not doing more of it but like you can't really fucking research this stuff if you don't know japanese it's it's fucking impossible there's just not enough you know information in english and what there is is trickling out in a like a you know wave motion canon i love what they're doing where they're translating interviews with japanese creators right now and it's all like you know hot important people who people care about but it's like this is one interview about like one cut from one show kind of thing you know like sometimes a year old and i'm like I need to be able to fucking, like, a, a journalist is someone who calls up the office of the fucking place and, you know, gets the interview, which, in fairness, Wave Motion Cannon did this interview with Lan from uh, the To Be Hero show. That was great. That's some real journalism there that they could reach out to him and, like, get this guy who, you know, is fucking just now being heard of, just, like, breaking out and having this like moment and it's like this monumentous occasion for Chinese animation and stuff and even then like as excited as Lan is to the fact that like a, an American cares about his work at all uh you know 
on the flip side, how many people even read Wave Motion Cannon? You know, like, disinformation needs to be out there. And that's when I feel like, well, I've got the platform. I've got the 250 subscribers, or 50,000 subscribers, rather. But, um, but do they care? You know, like, if I become this, like, if I became a full-blown journo, it's like, yeah, I'm doing better work, but no one wants it. You know, people want the pop shit. There's a reason that my biggest videos are, like, reviews of, you know, shows I don't like and stuff. It's, people aren't clamoring for the, uh, for the information. They want the stories. And, of course, the best journalist can spin the story, you know, can spin the info into a story. And, uh, yeah, like, I feel like that's what I'm... That's what I'd like to be able to do, but without knowing Japanese, it's so much harder. And being the, you know, insular, self-obsessed guy that I am, being the guy who, who doesn't spend a month on a video, I spend a day on a video. I spend, you know, and, and I don't just mean like main series videos, I mean like I'm constantly making shit. I always have something going on. I have three uh, Let's Plays that I'm in the middle of editing. Let's Plays, like nobody even cares. Nobody even fucking cares about my Let's Plays, except for like this, this handful of people who are like hardcore fans. But you know, that's the kind of work I, I'm saddling myself with that's taking away from time I could be learning Japanese. But you know, doing a Let's Plays fun and learning Japanese fucking blows. But it's something I hope I eventually do, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna get any more mature than I am now, so that's, I can't say, like, maybe when I'm growed up, uh, that time is come and is here. Mm. This is what I'm talking about. Like, you know, I went on that whole rant not thinking about the fact that this will come out before and then people will just link this to that guy. So, you know, that's the kind of thing that's going to happen. And I, I'd rather talk to him about it in person. So now I'm just going to have to scrub 15 minutes out of this podcast that I don't even want to do that. Well, God, that's probably the end. This might be a shorter one. I, I, I thought I was actually going to rant for like, 40 minutes about this, but uh, I seem to have gotten all the ideas that were at the surface of my head out in a in a concentrated burst. So um, that might be the end, and yeah, we'll we'll leave it in case I remember something. So this video is going to be coming out a little late, uh, like an extra day rather than at the end of the week. I know because it's already the 15th <laughs> as I'm recording this, like. Uh, about 45 minutes ago it became that um, in any case just to some parting thoughts you know I got a moderator for Rec Compendium um, gave it to rival Steven who moderates the subreddit for the procrastinators channel that we uh, don't talk about all that much but it's always in the descriptions and uh, you know, after after yesterday, I felt like total shit until I did this recording, and then I went and got Ben. We worked out. I felt much better after working out and eating something that wasn't fucking fast food for the first time in the day. Uh, I spent all night watching Chris Ott videos and all day today doing the same. And, uh, yeah. You know, I, I, fi I find that for me, um, a bad mood is usually attributable to like it, it's it's usually more physiological like whatever I'm mad about I'm mad about it because of other reasons like it's not really because it's that bad like there's a lot of things I can shrug off when I'm generally feeling good that will make me feel shitty if I'm generally feeling shitty so it's kind of funny in that way uh, but man, I've just been reeling from the realization um, when I did the last part of this recording that like, I can't, I can't say anything anymore that has no repercussions. Like, I have too much of an audience now that, that knows my stuff too well, like too many people who follow everything I do. And it's kind of funny, like, it used to be that the things I said didn't matter. Like, I could say fucking anything and it just didn't matter because, uh, you know, I was nobody. And now that I'm, um, you know, someone popular, then it's like everything I say, 
like has some kind of repercussion not that i'm saying like i'm gonna watch my words from now on like i'm not that type of person uh, i'm always just gonna be like off the handle but it's just it's really interesting to sort of enter that world where um you know if i name drop somebody for any reason that person's probably gonna hear about it because it wasn't just some guy who said it it was digi bro who has 250,000 subscribers and who you know has fans who will who will send my stuff to the people i'm talking about um or even not fans just people who want to start something you know if i'm talking shit about somebody uh and vice versa like anything anyone says about me i hear about it it's it's really funny to me when people are like shocked that i turn up somewhere when people are like wow you watch that youtube channel or wow you do that yeah of course i do all i do is fucking watch youtube all i do is consume stuff you know like i'm whoever if you're someone who sits at your computer all day and like you know watches my videos like i promise i sit at my computer more than you do and watch even more videos than you do <laughs> you know like all i do is sit around and and watch stuff so like yeah anytime someone mentions me it gets sent to me you know someone's gonna fucking post it on my reddit or something and i'm gonna watch it i'm always around um so yeah it's it's kind of funny when people are like oh my god digi you watch this channel i watch every channel um if it's relevant to like the kind of stuff i'm doing you know i'm gonna get sent it eventually so yeah that's funny to me just because i guess i guess it's like people see it as if you have a big following you must just be busy all the time like you know somehow you're spending all your time d doing something i don't know what you know i don't know I, I mean i guess that's like there's a lot of big channels who they don't you know they don't respond to comments they don't seem to watch a lot of youtube videos and stuff but the reason for that isn't because they're big it's because it's, they're it's just not what they do you know like if you're someone who normally spends a lot of time like let's say you have a family you know if you spend all your time with your family no you're not reading youtube comments you know you're not out there watching everybody else's videos and stuff but like uh that's not a consequence of having a big channel um i that's you know that's what i i, I live my life just the way that probably most of my viewers do which is probably why so many of them connect with me you know because it's like, hey, this guy is exactly like me, just articulate and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, and interesting in the way he thinks about things. But, yeah, I find that kind of funny. But anyways, that about wraps up this, uh, this decompression podcast. It was a very, a very necessary one, I guess, for me this week. Um, but... It, this podcast is, it's funny because it, its purpose is kind of to get stuff out there and relieve stress, but it can be stressful in itself just because it is a thing I have to make, you know, and I, I've got so much going on. And like right now, the consequence of me making this is that I'm not editing the new PCP that we just recorded, you know, and like now those are going to come out weirdly back to back and uh, the whole schedule of this channel is kind of fucked, but it's because... The person who cares the most is Nate, and Nate has the least time to deal with any of it. Like, Nate is the one who, by far, puts the most effort into organizing the PCP and making sure it comes out, you know, and, like, making sure everybody's on top of their game, but he personally can't work on it. You know, he doesn't have time to edit these videos and to, and to make it all correct. And, like, uh, and I'm the only one who's kind of reliable enough to expect that it'll actually come out, like, reasonably on time, because I edit fast and I don't put things off um the way everybody else will like in the early days of pcp we were all editing like we 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 would exchange editors and you can see that in most of the early videos like there's a credit for editor and like you know if jesse edits one he's gonna put more effort in but it's gonna take an extra fucking week before it comes out um so you know it just kind of falls on me which is funny because i'm doing a million things so you know, I'll put it off for a couple of days because I want to do the decompression chamber. I want to do this uh, Did You Brought to Dark video, you know. But anyway, so that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned. The next one will probably be out in a week, but maybe it'll be a day late like this one. You know, it's not a strict format. Um, enjoy the music and have a nice day.